Hi guys, welcome to Everything Blockchain. In today's video, we're going to be talking about Index Group's first yield product, Interest Compounding ETH, IC ETH. I'm going to begin by describing the product, followed by how it works. Then we shall go through the benefits, risks, as well as the returns. And as a bonus, I'm going to show you how to earn additional yield with IC ETH which you can do by providing liquidity to the ICETH ETH pool on Uniswap using Gelato Finance's GUNI wrapper. Sounds like a lot, but don't you worry, I've got you covered. Stay tuned and let's get started. Also, now would be a good time to tell you to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Index Group is a community-led DAO focused on enabling the creation and adoption of on-chain crypto index products. If you don't know what Index Group is, I suggest you pause the video, read my article, I've dropped the link in the description box for you, and then come back. ICETH is Index Group's first yield product that provides an enhanced yield on ETH using a leverage liquid staking strategy built on set protocol. It won't be fair to proceed any further before I explain to you what leverage liquid staking is. We all know staking is a great way to earn yield on ETH. And tokens like State ETH by Lido simplify the staking process by offering a liquid, interest-bearing token. Lido lets its users stake ETH without locking assets or maintaining infrastructure whilst participating in on-chain activities like lending. And leverage liquid staking is what ICETH is doing. And that essentially involves depositing state ETH within Aave as collateral and borrowing ETH, then swapping for more state ETH. Then that state ETH is deposited as additional collateral in Aave, allowing for more ETH to be borrowed and subsequently swapped for additional state ETH. So the cycle, as you can see, is repeated until reaching the target leverage ratio of 3.1s. And if the index needs to deleverage, it simply executes the same process but in reverse. So it exchanges the state ETH for ETH, reduces the debt position in Aave, and repeats this until reaching the target leverage ratio. Now let's move on to the benefits associated with the use of IC ETH. Index group states that it minimizes risk. Although risk is never eliminated with the use of leverage, the high correlation between the collateral and the debt that is state ETH and ETH, it significantly lowers the liquidation risk. Then rather than submitting a dozen different transactions in Aave and other debts, users can simply buy the ICE tokens and benefit from socialized gas costs. So you see you have lower gas fees. The next one is ease of use. ICE3 balances the position for users, so they don't need to constantly monitor or manage. Moreover, because ICE is a fully collateralized ERC20 token, it can be integrated into a number of different DeFi protocols and platforms to expand its utility as well as use case. The first is the liquidation risk. Like I mentioned, the use of leverage has inherent liquidation risk if the health of the collateralized debt position were to fall below the liquidation thresholds. However, in the case of ICETH, the underlying Aave position would be liquidated if the index's leverage ratio were to reach 4s. The automated keeper system and the ripcord function minimize liquidation risk by persistently monitoring and adapting the leverage ratio to stay far below the liquidation thresholds. If you want to know more about the automated keeper system and the ripcord function, Index Group has a blog that has covered it at length. I'll drop the link for that as well. Now, the high correlation between the collateral and the debt, which I mentioned before, also significantly lowers the liquidation risk. Because their prices move in tandem, there is a more persistent leverage ratio compared to uncorrelated collateral and debt assets like ETH and USDC. Another risk to consider is the interest rate risk, which is related to the staking rate for staked ETH and the borrow rate for ETH. To put it simply, incremental yield can only be generated if state ETH staking rate exceeds the Ethereum borrow rate. Let's move on to the returns. 
The return on ICE is variable in the sense that the effective yield can change as the state in and borrow rates fluctuate. At the time of recording this video, the yield on ICE versus ETH is 7.56%, as you can see here. If the spread between the staking rate and the cost to borrow compresses, ICE holders realize less yield. However, if this very spread expands, they realize more yield. The ICE dashboard that Index2 provides helps you monitor the current and historical yield on ICE, and it also tracks the key metrics. I will be linking the dashboard for you in the description box. In the following section of the video, I'm going to show you how to mint ICE on the Index Group app, followed by providing liquidity in the ICE ETH pool. So let's get started. It's extremely easy to mint your own ICE ETH tokens through the Index Group UI. So what you need to do is log on to their website, click on the app so you're redirected to it. Start by connecting your wallet and selecting the Ethereum network. Users have the option to trade ETH, DAI or USDC to buy the token. The app can make direct purchases on a DEX like Uniswap or else mint new tokens depending on what is most cost effective for the customer. As you can see here, I've entered an amount of 0.05 ETH and in turn I am going to get 0.0497 IC ETH, the network fee, and it's been offered from Uniswap. So I'm going to go ahead and click on trade. Confirm the transaction. And wait. You can now check your balance by clicking on your dashboard. You can check your transaction history right there. And let's now move on to providing liquidity through Sorbet Finance. So we're gonna click on pools. GUNI is an ERC20 wrapper around Uniswap LP positions that makes them fungible and auto compounds the earned fees into the pool. As IC ETH is pet to ETH, providing liquidity for an IC ETH ETH pair enables IC ETH holders to earn an additional yield on their IC ETH position while minimizing the risk of impermanent loss. What happens is, in this situation, investors who wish to earn additional income on their position can LP the token against wrapped ETH to earn trading fees on their position. It actually avoids any risk of impermanent loss and is solely exposed to the price volatility of Ethereum. Because the two assets are so tightly correlated in price, the GUNI pool uses an extremely tight range of 0.99 to 1.02 IC ETH to ETH. This range provides extremely high returns for any LPs. So now what we do is click on select a token and we select Ethereum. Then we scroll down and Click on Nets to get to the IC ETH, ETH pool. Click on View. You can see the total value, APR at 5.25%, the fees earned, as well as the pool status. As you can see, my current position is $0. My wallet balance is 0.05 IC ETH. I'm going to click on Add Liquidity. Click on Max. Now I have insufficient ETH balance, that is the wrap ETH. So I cannot go ahead with the transaction, but I'm going to show you exactly what you will need to do. All you have to do from this point is accept and approve IC ETH as well as ETH and click on add liquidity, confirm the transaction. And with that, you have completed the process of adding liquidity to the IC ETH ETH pool. So that's it for today, guys. That's how you provide liquidity to the pool. And if there's anything else you want to know, you can reach out to me through the comments section and I will be happy to help. I'll be dropping all relevant links as promised in the description box. If you liked today's video, make sure to show some love. I'll be back with more such videos. Till then, take care. Bye.